Greetings, internetizens. This is Elmeltian playing Professor Layton in the Miracle Mask. In the last episode, we met with um, Dalston, and then we got the a letter from uh, the masked gentleman. Then we met with uh, some cops at the task force. There's a new guy named Gray, but also we figured out that this guy is just using the art of misdirection. He disturbs everyone with light, and meanwhile, he hides some people and replaces them with horses, for example. And now I'm suspecting that Miss Flatlips is an accomplice. Ooh. And we're just supposed to talk to more cops and uh, this guy. Wait, wrong screen! Yeah, the miracles are fake. Oh, bloom, not grey. Where did I get grey? I wanna get started on the next one. I'm interested to see what you think about the incident at the museum. What do you know so far? We have reports of people jumping out of some paintings at the museum and defacing property around town. Ridiculous. <laughs> These individuals vandalized the area. More than that, witnesses said these orderly dressed folks destroyed property, broke windows, nearly started the riot. And then they might have been reused for another show. Then they disappeared just as quickly as they appeared. Did anyone actually see these people come out of the paintings? No, the museum was closed by then. So why do people think these individuals came out of the paintings? Well, apparently they were dressed just like people in some of the paintings that were displayed in the museum. Down to the finest detail. And when we checked the museum, we saw that the paintings were empty. He stole the paintings. What do you mean empty? I don't know how else to say it. All the people in the paintings were gone. Only the backgrounds were left. He's a thief. Interesting. The key here must lie in the paintings themselves. We must examine the parts where the people are missing. What if they were painted with lower quality? That's what I thought. But we've thrown our best men at these paintings and I haven't found a thing. Allow me to ask a few questions. <laughs> Thief. Were are these paintings especially valuable? No, they were all re replicas. Portraits mainly. I'm no art guy, but I wouldn't hang them up in my house, I can tell you that. Hmm. Why would we ask about the source of the paintings? Were the paintings from a common source? Yes. According to the museum's curator, they were all donated earlier that day. Oh, so the paintings had a trick in them. The people were rigged to disappear. Painted with special paint that somehow disappears after some exposure to air. The majority of them were famous portraits that came from an anonymous donor. That can't be a coincidence. 
Whoever donated these paintings must be considered an accomplice to this. We looked into it, but nobody has any information on the donor. Even more suspicious. We interrogated the entire museum staff and they all checked out clean and ignorant. A lot of time spent and nothing learned. We must understand how the illusion was created in order to find the truth. Mm, strangely packaged. Vacuum sealed, perhaps? Were the paintings oddly packaged? Hmm. The curator did say they were all vacuum sealed. He said that type of care was usually reserved for very rare items. Yes, the air is important. I believe the airtight packaging is the key. The portraits were sealed when they arrived, and the frames came in thick metal cases. The museum staff was surprised that the replicas required such secure packaging. We didn't think much of it. If my theory is correct, the donation must have included specific display instructions. Hmm. Oh, light. Light or air? No. Let's assume it's air. And uh, it's about time. Were these instructions about what time the paintings needed to be placed on display? Ah yes, actually they were! Your deductive skills are impressive, Leighton. Just before they got... Mm, stolen? <laughs> no. The crates arrived in the morning with instructions they be displayed exactly at noon. How did you know that? Well, therein lies the trick. <laughs> no hype, no gas this time. The portraits were treated with a special paint that evaporates when exposed to air. Does such a thing even exist? Have you ever noticed how sunlight can cause the colors in a painting to fade? In a similar way, it's possible to create chemically reactive paints that will turn transparent when exposed to air. Of course, you could make anything in the painting look like it just disappeared. The chemical process would have to run its course, so the timing must be precise. The seals were removed so that the paint turning transparent would coincide with the appearance of the vandals. The masked gentleman had these vandals dressed up just like the people in the portraits. Genius! Or oh, insanity! Why not both? But Leighton, we have no evidence to back this theory of yours. Well, I doubt such paint would disappear completely without a trace. If you examine the paintings for chemical residue, I'm sure you'll find outlines from where the paint turned transparent. Fascinating. Well, we'll see what we find. Good work, Leighton. Another one down. Let's take a break. I would like a minute to think about this. I give the breaks around here, Bloom. Right. Alright, take five, everyone. Let, them, let me know when you're ready to continue. Can we leave now? They're all back here and uh, nothing. All these police officers do is stand around, eat scones and talk about cricket. Are you sure they're not talking about crickets? Bugs are more interesting than sports. Alright, let's get to it, guys. Inspector Grosky, the floor is yours. Alright, Clayton, 
Let's take a look at another of these dark miracles. The next one's a real doozy. Well, if it's anything like the first two, it's not a miracle at all. Yes, yes, but none of the other ones involve people being engulfed in flames. Were the people fake? That is true. <laughs> this all began last Sunday morning. Ominous sound effects. Thirteen citizens received a threatening letter from our masked you-know-who. It read as follows. If you value your life, come to the Gallery Plaza this afternoon at one o'clock. He also took an, out an ad in the paper. Dark Miracle Seeking Gallery Plaza. No more games. Meet me at 1 p.m. Quite a bold move making an announcement like that. Yes, the plaza was packed with tourists and local citizens alike. We have a transcript of its little performance here. Welcome, good people of Montador. I am the masked gentleman. Thirteen of you received a special invitation to be here. The masked gentleman didn't show himself, only his voice was heard in front of a tent that was set up there. Just before 1pm, part of the tent was dropped to reveal the 13 invitees. Did they move? How far away was this stage from the audience? We don't have that exact information. Not far, but not close either. So then, when the clock struck one, BOOM! <sighs> All 13 people burst into flames! Apparently the flames burned brightly, peaked and were immediately gone. A flash of light. The flames were gone, her fire was fake. Yes, gone! And no more! Burned themselves out to ashes and blew away, probably! That's not a miracle. That's a public execution. No, no, that's a magic show. That's a disappearance act. But it wasn't. All 13 people were later found at home completely unharmed. I don't understand. No one does. All 13 were just as confused as we were. They remember going to the plaza, but nothing after that. Did you check under the stage? Maybe the 13 people hid under it during the fire. The stage was completely destroyed by the fire. Nothing was left but ashes. I'm going crazy lacking my brain here. It's like trying to bench press a car. I'm so, so close, but I can't quite get it. Are the investigating officers present? Uh, yes, sir. I took the witness statements and interrogated all 13 individuals, sir. I have a few questions for you. <sighs> Where are the magicians? Where are all of the magicians? Um, I, I, I don't know, sir. I didn't ask if they were magicians. Should I have? No, 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 no. Could the 13 invitees have been the masked gentleman's accomplices? Uh, we suspected that at first, but we earned a check on all of them. They were all clean. Were they friends by any chance? And uh, Not exactly, but now that you mention it... Yes. I thought maybe they worked out together or something, that they all went to the same gym. Well, this is news to me. None of them looked like they could even find the gym. <laughs> I didn't think it was that significant. I mean, that was their only connection. 
A coincidence of fitness, Layton? I don't believe in coincidences. Oh. No, 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 no. He was. Yeah. The people on the stage might have been fake. Maybe he saw them at the together at the gym, and then made replicas of people. Did anyone see the thirteen people take the stage in the center of the plaza? I thought that was strange too, and no one saw the tent go up or anyone entered. It sounds like the tent was just there. So the invitees got on stage without being seen by anyone. In the middle of the day, no less. Yes, very strange. I'm curious about one other thing. A uh, fire away! <laughs> fire, no! Uh, never mind! <sighs> clothes. Did they have the same clothes at home? Or were they wearing their gym clothes? Were the clothes they were wearing on stage different than what they were wearing at home when you questioned them? Uh, well, I, I don't know. Is there any way to find out? I can take a look at the photos, just give me one second. Uh, surely those clothes shouldn't be... <laughs> like, the clothes should be destroyed by the fire. What are you thinking, Leighton? We might have something here. Oh, professor, sir! Uh, all of their outfits were different. Oh yeah, gym clothes. What? Or thirteen of them? That's... that's... well, I don't know what that means. Uh, we've got photos that some tourists took on the scene, and every one of them, that one of those thirteen, were wearing different outfits at home. What could that possibly? Oh, I think I've got it. Yes, I've solved it. The, the clothes were stolen. Uh, don't hurt me, Inspector. W what is it? The victim's clothes burned up on stage and they all ran home naked to change. Groski. Uh... Well, I don't hear any other brilliant ideas. Stop smirking, Leighton! What is it? I wasn't smirking. My mouth was just thinking. Inspector, I don't believe our 13 victims ever left their homes. Have you lost your mind, Leighton? Hundreds of people saw them on that stage. Allow me to explain. All 13 people received a letter, correct? That's right! Was it just one letter? I believe there was a second letter that gave instructions to not leave home. Possibly with a reward for doing so. This letter probably contained instructions to show only the first letter to the police under threat of some horrible consequences. But they were in that plaza! On that stage! Actually, there is no evidence of that. I believe there were expertly crafted, highly combustible mannequins on that stage. Uh, how do you figure that based on what they were wearing? Someone stole their clothes in advance. Uh, from the gym, of course. Some of them said they had been victims of theft recently, but I, I didn't think anything of it. Uh, hang on. While the invitees were safely at home, the masked gentlemen burned their likenesses as others watched in horror. The crowd was already convinced that he could perform miracles, so it only took some rudimentary pyrotechnics. It's preposterous! Lathan, I think you're perfect, sleek and seal. Uh, Professor Lathan, you're right. I found a second letter in the evidence bags. Uh, great work, Professor. 
and I'm always happy to cast some light on a dark miracle. No, the blips. Have I mentioned that the Ace Attorney series also has blips? Also differentiated like that. Well, it seems... Uh, uh, mm, uh, mm, little boys uh, still have uh, deep blips. It's not entirely differentiated by gender because Divas Keza has deep blips as well. Wait. I'm gonna put the mic thingy on because it fell off again. Absolutely brilliant, Professor Layton. We don't have much information on the statue incident, but when we get something I'd like to speak with you. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Eldorado from Inca too? Who knows? Now that we are on to some of the masked gentlemen's methods, perhaps we can solve this one ourselves. I mean, the voice. I'm doing now for him. I have faith in your team, detective. Well, at least now we know that this villain is just a big phony. He's flesh and blood just like the rest of us. Unless he's a robot. I knew it all along. I know this masked fool strictness now. He can run and he can hide, but he can't run and hide from Groski from the yard. I'm coming for you, mask head face. <laughs> well then, I'm really very sorry about him. No matter how many times we discuss this, it doesn't seem to do any good. He's quite excitable. Inspector Groski and I will continue to investigate the scene of the statue incident once he's calmed down. Professor Layton, let's reconvene once our officers have finished searching the scene. Yes, in the meantime, Emiluk and I will continue our own investigation. Meeting adjourned. Oh, you have a puzzle for me. You helped us out there, Layton. Now it's clear that the masked gentleman has a partner in crime and I think we've got him. I hope we've got him. He's our only suspect. We're waiting for one of the officers to get back to us on the warrant. I can't release his name yet, but as soon as the warrant clears, I'm going to bring him in for questioning and confessioning. Even if he flees, we'll be able to track his movements. Everyone moves in patterns. But what if he breaks the pattern on purpose? In this desert area? A little boy was walking around town when he came to a stop and just watched people move around a bit. They were moving around in three distinct patterns. The people he watched in profile were in profile the entire time they were moving. <laughs> a playground. Front profile, moving vertically. Well, but triangle? That's a swing, that's a seesaw, and that's just a triangle. Oh, one of these climbing structures. Don't keep me in suspense. There is no puzzle without a solution. Oh, a slide. But there is climbing involved. I knew you'd get it. Our suspect is currently under close surveillance. Hopefully he'll, he'll, he'll lead us straight to the masked gentleman. But wouldn't those kids bored of using the same ride over and over? I mean, the swing and seesaw guys, sure, they... They gotta run 
a few cycles, but a slide? Just repeating? Well, this sounds quite promising, Chief. Yes, I'll be glad to get closer to the truth here. Especially if we find something out before Broom does. As satisfying as that may be, please keep in mind that we all have the same goal here. Of course! Glad you're here, Leighton. It's good to hear a voice of reason over the noise of those yapping London egos. If you find anything, just be sure you come see me first. Remember, I'm in charge here. Of course, we're the team. Beauty, brains, brawn and... Figurehead boss. Oh, that's a projector, not a camera! I got it backwards again! Professor Layton, any new revelations since we last spoke? Unfortunately, no. We suspect the masked gentleman is a tourist. We're checking hotel records for those who have been here for the month. Hundreds of people fit that description. I guess that's to be expected in a place like Montador. But it's a start. I imagine it has been difficult to find many specifics about the culprit. Yes, this town's situation is unique. The carnival certainly isn't helping. Yes, it's unique. It's a desert in England. With so many wearing either a mask or a costume, everyone is a suspect. Sheffield won't stop going on about keeping the public safe, but he won't accept that the public is in danger if we don't work together. If you come across anything, please let me know. Remember, I'm in charge here. I need to get back to the investigation if I'm to find anything before he does. Well, Detective Bloom and Chief Sheffield have an interesting working relationship. Leighton, I just heard. Stupendous. Absolutely incredible. Sorry, I had to sneeze. Thanks for your help. It was nothing there. Oh, it was... Uh, never mind then. Wait, uh, it was definitely not nothing. The police said you debunk her dark miracles. Uh, this means we can reopen the art museum. The curator will be thrilled. Uh, maybe you could stop there, so he can thank you in person. Oh, I heard we've received some new art donations. I'll personally see to it that they're checked for vanishing paint. Uh, vanishing paint. You reopened the museum, Professor. Always happy to do something for the fine arts. Perhaps we should continue our investigation with a museum visit. I I've never thought I'd be so excited about going to a museum. Not even a natural history museum. Wait, uh, the mayor has an episode, I think. Uh, Michelle, uh, Michelle, where are you? I'm right here in front of you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I just had two ideas. Sir, we already agreed that an underwater casino was a bad idea. Where would we get so much water? Uh, we did? Oh, scratch the first one. I was also thinking about how all the questions... About all of the questions we've been getting lately. Our office has been flooded with questions about the masked gentleman. Uh, I know it's disrupting you and your work, but I was thinking that we should put together a special task force. Uh, we could give them headquarters here at City Hall, so they'd be on hand in case any new incidents occur. Mr. Mayor, how many times do I have to tell you? That, that's not a bad idea, actually. I had a good one, yes. 
and I thought we could call Scotland Yard and see if they could spare a few investigators. Uh, wait, we can do that? Well, I think we can. Uh, or should we just wait for them to call us? I knew the good ideas had to come to an end at some point. Don't worry, sir, I'll take care of it. Okay, back to the journal. Oh yeah, paintings? Where rigged? It wasn't the people. Meeting is adjourned. Uh, I've notified the museum stuff that they are clear to reopen. Thank you. Uh. Some people are just set dressing. All these police officers do is stand. Yeah. Where are we going now? Uh, to the museum, probably. Uh, stop right there! Uh, who are you? Uh, what business do you have here? I think there's a misunderstanding. We were just walking. Uh, a likely story. If you're really as innocent as you say you are, we should have no trouble solving this puzzle. But what if I'm a criminal mastermind? Nah, I'm just his rival. Ooh, someone's got goggles on his head. You want to cut this unusual 6x6 chessboard into four pieces that are the same shape, have an equal area, each uh, contain one white pawn and one black pawn. <laughs> Four pieces. It would be nine each. Are we doing a spiral? <sighs> Separate the black ones. Separate the white ones. Not three by three. Yeah, this might be it. Nice and symmetrical. I believe I have this one. An excellent puzzle. Hmm, everything seems to be in order. I try to be less suspicious next time. As I said, we were just walking. You were prowling around like a pack of wolves. Now go, before I call for backup. Inspector Groski is such a dreamboat. The neon lights of Montador really highlight his pompadour. And his chest hair is like a furry hand greeting you from just over his collar. Oh, I didn't see you there. I'm Hannah, president of the Groskets. And that's my fan club for Inspector Groski. Care to join? Ah, Hannah, of course. We've met before. And thanks, but no thanks. I'm not really much of a joiner. I followed the inspector here, but he seems to be busy doing police work. He's been working around the clock. Sir, you had to come all the way from London for nothing. If you'll excuse us. It's my duty as president to watch Inspector Groski's every move. Too bad the local police are holding him back. Did he find anything suspicious on the clock? 
The local police are holding Drusky back. <laughs> I mean, yes, aha! <laughs> How long have you been following Drusky around, Hannah? Oh, a while. I was there when the masked gentleman turned those people into horses. That was crazy. I was also there when he turned those people to stone. That was insanity. I know Groski is moving swiftly to catch the masked gentleman, though. Well, his legs move swiftly, as does his mouth. We know that much. I heard the police found tracks from some sort of carriage. Next time I see Groski, I'm going to tell him about the tracks. He works so hard, he may not have heard about them yet. I also found this photo when I was following the inspector around the other day. I was hoping it would be a useful clue. Are we assembling a picture again? Ooh. The owner of a cafe took a photo of a visiting celebrity couple. The owner said he'd put it somewhere in the cafe, but the resulting photo ended up looking, looking a bit miserable. Where's the best place to put it without harming the chief cheerful ambience? Mm. Between the windows? Drawing circles again. What does this mean? They're looking out the windows. I'm Why not just put up a picture of the landscape or a boat? There's some Maybe I'm birds. An unusual way of putting the photo up. What, do we put it on the floor or something? Or on the ceiling? We're covering up half of it. Is it on the chairs? Or on a table? But how? I don't see a mirror anywhere. Mm. Okay, here we go. Are you certain about that? This is unusual. Face each other. Oh, rolling up the photo, put it on a mug. Oh, the ball. Okay, here we go. What is the ball even for? It's too thin to be a pillar and looks like metal. Ooh. If only life was as simple as a puzzle. What am I doing? I don't have time to mope around. I've got things to do. Inspector Gorski isn't going to follow himself around. He's not some kind of dog chasing his tail. Mm, wait, no. Mm. She saw some tricks. Oh, Kalina! Again! Mm. 
Okay, I probably won't see Ocarina first. Uh, there's another purple. The witch's song. Ooh, spooky. Goblins. Or moblins. And that's the separation. Yeah, golden canaries. No, 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 don't put the other yellow there. Red, though. Now. I think we've connected it. We have a customer. I'm looking for a witch's song, Ocarina. What's this? More purple. The fine fiddle. Ooh, other violin. A canary fiddle. What more yellow. The fairest breath. It's someone's fairies. Another Ocarina. Ooh, deep tone. Murdered the sunset violin. Can't beat it. Our struggles are bad news, even the winners end up losing something. Nothing on the vines. I figured out how Dalston and the Masked Gentleman are linked. But what about Henry? Mount Salton, the mountain of Professor Salton, who got murdered in the Caves of Steel. Right here, folks. <laughs> mm. Looks like the museum reopened. Just like the mayor said. Let's go inside and have a look. Oh, but I wanna take the wrong way first. You! You're a suspect! I mean, suspected of being an accomplice. You must tell me where you picked up your hat. It just suits you so well. <coughs> I 
the clown has a puzzle. Hey, hey, the, the guy with the hat. You remember me? Of course, how could I forget? I'm glad to see you're doing well. Uh, yeah, if it wasn't for you, I might be a statue, which might be an improvement. Is everything all right? Oh, I hurt my back, so the circus put me on 30 minute medical leave. An injured clown is useless. I can't even bend down to reach my rubber chicken. And now I'm just working on this puzzle here. Can you help me out? Ooh, what is this? Are we assembling something? Suit crates, hmm. Four large painting crates are sitting here and stacked in a certain way. These crates combine to create one of the four symbols of a third suit. Use the crane to move the four crates and place them on the dice to the right so that they form this card suit symbol. Which symbol can we fully assemble? I see the bottom parts, they're the same on the red and same on black. I believe I have this one. Solving puzzles is truly a pleasure. Uh, thanks for the distraction. I almost forgot about my crippling bed pain. Almost. Let's stop by the circus sometime and visit our lonely tiger. Well, we're off to the museum now! Ah, it's a fine museum. Fine? I'd say it's magnificent. hidden puzzle, if I'm not mistaken. Oh no! Oh, your precious queen is all mine. Someone stole a statue. Move the crates to open the path. Move, yeah. Move this statue.
I believe I have this one. An excellent puzzle. I love the thrill of a good solution. Oh yeah, this is a common voice line. Ooh, hand! Oh, is that a scarf? They didn't try to grab us or anything. <coughs> Wait, no, the episodes. Yeah, the collection. It's so nice to be able to share our gift of art with the people again. Thank you so much for your help. I'm Artie, the director here. Mary Bilson told me about your work with the task force. It was my pleasure. May I ask you a few questions about the incident here? Oh, of course, but I've already told the police everything I know. Though I can assure you that we'll be inspecting any anonymous donation much more thoroughly from now on. I don't imagine the masked gentleman will be making any more donations here. Uh, I certainly hope not. We did find a nice puzzle among the donated paintings here. Oh. A renowned but clumsy chef prepared this month from water margarita pizza and cut it into eight slices. Unfortunately, he somehow managed to flip over all but one of them in the process. How? <laughs> he tried his best to flip the slices back up. Every time he flips one, the adjacent slices turn over with it. One of these puzzles.
I believe I have this one. An excellent puzzle. Ooh. Oh, you really are something else. Detective Bloom said you were a puzzle master. I thank you again. We couldn't have reopened the museum without your help and Mr. Outdoor's help, of course. Henry? Yes, that's right. He kindly donated several replacements for the confiscated pieces. Oh no! Uh, we're storing them in our warehouse with some other pieces generously donated by Mr. Lador, uh, just until we inspect them. I guess when you're the richest dark guy in town you can replenish a museum pretty easily. Uh, I suppose you're right, Luke. Uh, Mr. Lador is a valued patron. If you have other questions, Madame Lapushka in the Merchant District may be able to help you. I'm not one for gossip, but she has lived here quite a while. She knows everything about everyone and she loves to talk. Yes, thank you, Artie. Let's pay her a visit, shall we? Oh no... Henry... Once again that masked man escapes me. At this rate I'll never be able to aid my darling inspector. Oh Kroski, I shall wait vigilantly for you at the scene of every crime. Mm. Yeah, that speed, that elegance, that form, truly blessed with grace and poised to rival that of the masked gentleman. Hey, you're not the female spy, are you? I beg your pardon? My name is Hannah. I'm the president of the Gross Cats. Dreadfully sorry. It's just that you moved with such finesse. Forgive me. What is it about a spy? This is exactly the sort of information that would be useful to the inspector. Well, it has become common knowledge that whenever the masked gentleman strikes, she is sure to appear. Miss Flatlips? She first appeared after the detectives from London arrived. She's, it's rumored that she's some sort of secret agent. Who could this be? Uh, when the gentleman flies into the air, she leaps across rooftops. When he flees on wheels, she pursues him in heels. Uh, no officer ever beats her to the scene of a crime, and she has scored every inch of the city. Goodness gracious, she sounds very suspicious to me. If I find her, maybe I can get some information for Inspector Gorski. I would like to see her with my own eyes, but I, susp I suspect she may be a myth. We'll see about that. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, my Gorski, I'll get to the bottom of this for you. Goodness, that young woman certainly has a fiery passion. I wonder if I have any pizza left. Mm. Fuzzy, fluffy. I woke up so early today, even earlier than that noisy rooster. Mm. No new stuff. My cheery bunny runs into a baby squirrel. Nine different actions. Mm, what shall it be? And the bunny was in high spirits. Happy sunshine flower times. No wonder he was on his way home from the bakery with a freshly baked cake under his bunny arm. Slightly bashful. As he happily skips along, he suddenly found himself nose to nose with a baby squirrel. Uh, 
Uh, what does this mean? Is he supposed to look surprised? Mm -hmm. No, not concerned yet. Where had the little thing comes from? Come from. When it hurt to talk to her, but the squirrel just cried and cried. Maybe he could make her laugh with a few tricks. Let's show off. The only way he could comfort was baby was to give her his delicious cake. Said. What does this mean? I don't get it. What was the reaction when you see a friend? Mm. When she had come down, the baby squirrel told Bunny where she lived and she, he, looked, he took her home to her mother. Poor Ma Bunny was now out of cake and he was sad. Not a year. I do not get it. Sand bunny. Then the squirrel's mother ran out and gave bunny a gigantic carrot cake. Yay! about the little squirrel. Oh, talks to her, probably. Nice boy, action. I'm close. Sad bun. Got quite the repertoire now. How do you feel? Thanks for all the help, look. I feel fuzzy inside. Haha, <laughs> you feel fuzzy on the outside too. <laughs> oh, I've got one. Okay, let's hear it. Lights, camera. Action. It's an action for when I think of a new action. I beg your pardon? You know, I think humans have something similar. What was it again? Oh, Imulika! You're gonna mimic getting out of the bathtub or whatever. Imulika, sure. That moment when you get a great idea. I'll scribble, it, I'll scribble that brilliant idea down in the rabbit journal. Sounds good to me. I haven't been idle either. I thought of something for you during the last play. 
It would be great if you could pretend to fall over, like all the energy drained from you. Also, we might need one for wriggling around on the floor. Can you manage those? They sound easy enough. I'll see what I can do. Good, I'll call the exhausted one Slump and the wriggling one Tantrum. Straightforward. Slump and Tantrum. I'll get to work on those right now. I'll make a note of those in the rabbit journal. Right, I hope. Tantrum? I was imagining more like a cat that just encountered some, some catnip. Pulling his tummy to the floor. Tickling his chest. What is um Can I get him up so he has uh, some thorax exposed? to be on the ground. <laughs> Swinging those paws around like a cat. I can act like I'm annoyed because the tickling drives me crazy. Wait, is it going to be tickly every time I do this? Well, um, probably. I guess I'll have to build up a tickling tolerance. I can from the top look. Angie bunny. No, 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 that's the instructions. Anything? Hey, Sparky! Ah, I once saw a clown from the circus spinning around and around. I thought I might be able to do it too, but I just fall every time I try. If you want to spin like a ballet dancer, you're doing it around the wrong way, silly. You have to spin sideways, not forward. I knew I was doing something wrong. If Maurice can do it, so can I. I'll give them a spin that will make them all so proud. That's it! It's great to get inspiration from others! Alright, let's make sure to practice that one later. Oh yes, look! Teach me how to spin! Spin around ferociously! Like... Link doing the spin attack. Rub his chest from side to side. A little bit sick. Careful, don't overdo it. I'm fine. Her arms always almost stopped spinning now. <laughs> you kept it up for a long time, like a bunny ballet dancer. Why, thank you. I can write this down in the rabbit journal now. If something comes up where you need to dance, this is the one to use, alright? You can also use it to show the audience how happy you are. Got it?
Nothing here. And there's probably not new puzzles. Maybe there will be after I talk to her. Fish? Fish doesn't have coin. But this lady has wares. It's just butterflies. Darling, it's never too early to start thinking about your next costume party or your next outfit. Sorry, Madame Lapushka, but we're here on business. We heard that you've been here in Montedoy for quite some time. Maybe she's the spy? It sounds like you're starting to rise up. Yes, well, any type of investigation in this town is bound to be rough. See, getting solid information in Montedor is difficult because some of the people here are on their vacations. The tourists are always coming and going, so those who are truly know the town are few and far between. That is a good point, and the reason why you're here, why we're here. Yes, that's why I said it. I have a question about the local police. And now, now, darling, information doesn't grow on trees. You need to solve this puzzle first. Six ladies have just fin finished playing a tennis tournament in a round robin style. Each one played all the others once. The results are still the process of being drawn upon the board shown here, you know that only two of the matches ran out of time and then didn't draw. He managed to win a match despite being a tennis rookie. Can you work who she defeated? Hmm. Well, I've got it. Just a dash of puzzle solving here. No. Well, that won't do it all. It's F. It's F right. How about this? Puzzles are made to be solved. Now, is there anything you can tell me about the local police force? Of course, the people of Montedoria have always mistrusted the local police. They're not because they're corrupt, but because they're inept. They just haven't been able to keep up with the growth of the town. I see. Do you know anyone with a grudge against the Lador or Dalston families? You mean besides the many people who have gone broke in their many casinos? And no one comes to mind. But I was thinking, historic miracles do seem to require quite a bit of flesh money, don't you think? My thoughts exactly. Does that make you think of anyone in particular? No, but some of these circus performers came in recently and rented a large number of costumes at a pretty penny. I thought that was rather interesting, darling. Don't ask me why. Don't circus performers usually have their own costumes? Professor, do you think that they're actually helping the masked gentleman? It's possible. Let's see what we can find out at the circus tent. Alright. 
night, but this will be it for today. See you next time.